Guys, if you have not seen and heard about Chris Rock's recent comedy show, then I don't know what to say. I don't know where you've been. And you need to head over to Netflix now because the new Chris Rock special, he does his stand-up show, is savage. It is so good. It needs to be the most viewed thing on Netflix, like, now. It is jokes. He is so savage. He goes after everything, anyone, everyone. And he does talk about Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. And I will... Uh, address that in a different video because he was I mean he was passionate and I could tell or, or at least I think he was all in his emotions he was so angry because he was making a couple of mistakes when he did the Will Smith and Jada Pinkett uh, stick but he gives us a little lovely bonus a little lovely nugget he gives us Meghan Markle so he mentions Meghan Markle and I am just loving what he has said so because obviously he came out and said something on his comedy show I've picked up on a couple of other things that a couple of other comedians have spoken about Meghan Markle and so I'm just going to do this short video just looking at those bits um so please forgive me for stopping and starting I have to for copyright reasons um but I just wanted to show you a little bit of what Chris Rock says and it's covered by Pierce Morgan in his show Pierce Morgan Uncensored so here we go so some of that sh she went through was not racism it was just some in-law <laughs> so much i was so devastated when he got slapped by will smith i was all about chris rock chris rock is is just one of the best comedians out there because i think what's really key for comedians is their their voice so he has a very particular voice a very distinctive voice and he also um is very expressive and i think that makes comedians just hilarious so if you think of eddie murphy you think about his distinctive voice and um, yeah, and, and Chris Tucker and Dave Chappelle, they have particular voices and they have, uh, they're very, um, and they have, uh, and they're very expressive in their face and in their body. And I just think it, it just is so great. Sometimes it's just some in-law Cause she's complaining. I'm like, what the talking about? No, Oprah, they're so racist. They wanted to know how brown the baby was going to be. That's not racist. <laughs> Because even black people want to know yes, yes, yes. how proud the baby going to be. You didn't hear that, but I was clicking. So unfortunately, that's the only bit that I can sort of play. But uh, in the Netflix special, he, he basically starts off by saying, you know, why is she complaining? Um, he talks about victimhood, obviously, and then goes into Meghan Markle. He says, why is she complaining? She won the light skin lottery. And frankly, there we are. She That's just so true. She won the light skin lottery. She has pretty privilege. Um, so uh, absolutely 100%. I mean, I'm a woman of colour and I am just so, so in my feelings when other people of colour speak out. And I just am so grateful for Chris Rock to say to, to say something because he's saying it in a comedic way. So it does connect to a number of people and it does connect to his audience. But he is a man of colour. And he's an American, so he's also obviously reaching out to the American audience. So it's not just about British people, and every time British people speak, we are racist, and it's about our empire, we're colonial, and whatever. Um, and, you know, it's not just about the women that speak out, we're hating on Megan, and we're so jealous because she's so pretty, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and also, it, it you know, race is such a big issue. And I felt as though what she was talking about was not racism for me. And it was more devastating that that seemed to be the only example that she had. And it was more devastating that it turned out it wasn't even said to her, that it was a discussion that she had with Harry. And it was more devastating that she, you know, exaggerated it. So there was moments where, you know, um, Oprah was saying, what, conversations with you? And she was just nodding and nodding. And then Oprah was, wait, 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 what? Wait, somebody had a conversation with you? And then she goes, oh, Harry. And then sh she's like, a conversation. She's like, several conversations. And so you just let her and the audience just believe whatever they want to believe. 
And then when Harry comes on, he's like, well, it was one conversation and it was before, you know, we were engaged or something as she tried to make it, make people believe that it was when she was pregnant and during the time when they were talking about security. So trying to kind of exaggerate it and make it seem a lot worse than it was. And then, you know, when Oprah had said to her, are you going to tell me who it is? She said, no, because it would be damaging for them. Well, why would it be damaging if it's not racism? Obviously, you're implying it's racism. And then, you know, Oprah had said something like, you know, it, it's it's because of his race. And then Megan was like, if that's an assumption that you wish to make, well, I would say that was a pretty safe one. So she's obviously making it clear that it's racism, but the way that she did it was almost like leaving it to you to assume that and leaving it to Oprah to assume that so that Harry then turns around and goes, well, did she say racism? No, she did. I mean, it's so gaslighting and it's really scary because racism is such an important issue and people have really really suffered and lost their lives for that and the way they were playing around with that issue well well did we say racism no we didn't it was the media and actually it's unconscious bias some nonsense I just it's so awful and things like this and and, and the way she spoke and the way people acted and the race baiters and the people that are not knowledgeable they were acting in a way that created more division and you know it makes other people not want to ask questions because they're too afraid or not speak about things because they're too afraid and then it creates more division a wider gap it creates more misunderstanding more bigotry um, because people are afraid to discuss things and express their opinion and then people are afraid to share their opinion and have the real conversation I'm so sorry, guys. I had to pause for a moment there because I just got a delivery at the door and it's um, a bunch of flowers. Well, there we are. Um, OK, so. Yeah. And I mean, what it does is, you know, it stops the real conversation because people who want to ask questions um, or who want to make or who have a different view or want to challenge the views, they're too afraid to ask and they're too afraid to talk. And they just sit there going, yes, 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 you know, oh, yeah, or, or they just sit there quiet. And it's it's a shame because obviously the ones who feel a certain way want to educate the other side and have a dialogue and explain to them what their side of the view is. And it might help the other side be a bit more informed and change their opinion. And that's how we grow. And then the real racism and the real racist issues get so um you know get lost because of these types of issues that are thrown out that i just don't think is racism and frankly the actual conversation and the context of the conversation is just not even disclosed so how the hell is anyone going to make any informed decision as to what really happened you know it's it's ridiculous so i am so glad that chris rock spoke out because he is saying what a lot of us are thinking Right. And what a lot of people are too afraid to say. So I'm so glad that he has said it and doing it in a comedic way um, is a good way of making people laugh and making it be lighthearted and bringing people together. So I, I think that's a really good way. And he goes on in, in the bit, obviously, um, you know, go check it out. But he goes on in the bit to say, you know, it, this is really an in-law issue and that, you know, black people um, think about uh, the colour of their child's skin and they check and, you know, he makes jokes about how they check. And elements of it is so true. And that's why things are so funny. That's why everyone found South Park so funny because elements of it are, are true. People agree. People are like, oh my God, yes, and can relate to it and connect to it. That's why things are just so funny. Um, and it's more funny when you can relate to something. So this is why, you know, that the Chris, what Chris Rock says is just hilarious. Um, so yeah, so go and check it out. He absolutely just slates her, but I think he does it in a really good way. And I'm just so glad that a, a person of color uh, and an American has come out and spoken. So, you know, it seems that a lot of Americans are coming out and criticizing Harry and Meghan, and it provides me with a little bit of relief. You know, I, I want the best for them, don't get me wrong. I'm not here trying to be like, yeah, criticize them, please. But, you know, at the same time, it, the only reason why it pleases me is because a lot of British people don't like Harry and Meghan because of their behaviour. And so obviously what's happening now in America is that a lot of people are speaking out against them because of their behaviour. And so, you know, if if their 
popularity plummets in America, you know, what excuse are they going to give? You know, are they going to say, well, it's racism? Are they going to say, oh, well, it's all these right wing people? You know, it's not Democrats or liberals or lefties or, you know, whatever, or wokey. And it's so great to be wokey. Like, is that really they're going to be their excuse? I mean, come on now. So anyway, go and check it out. It's great. So moving on, I wanted to show you guys something else. So keeping on the same theme of comedians uh, roasting Meghan Markle. This is a comedian, not, not this guy, but the guy who will give the joke. It's a very quick joke. Uh, this is a comedian, Reese James, and it's a British uh, programme called Mock of the Week. And then they, it's just a, a comedic show, basically. It's on the BBC, as you can see. Um, and so what they're doing here is just live bits. They give a topic and then the comedians have to sort of jump in the middle and then just say a, a joke. So this bit is um, an unlikely dating profile. So Reese James is going to come and do a, a quick bit. Sick of seeing your family? Date me, Meghan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in fairness, you know, British public gets slated, but in fairness, you saw how everyone just went, oh, you know, as opposed to... <laughs> They actually just went oh because it was a it was a low a low blow but funny funny <laughs> just funny so guys again moving on keeping to the same theme uh this is now an um, an Australian actress Rebel Wilson and her name is Rebel Wilson and Rebel you are so Everyone's talking about it. What has Rebel Wilson said about Meghan Markle? So Rebel Wilson, she's an Australian uh, comedic actress and uh, she's done many, many movies in Hollywood. Um, so I think she's based in LA, I'm not sure. Um, so she has spoken out about Meghan Markle on Watch What Happens Live, which is a um, TV reality sort of talk show or uh, hosted by this guy called um Andy Cohen who is the producer or creator or director of whoever of um all of the real housewives series um so this guy is banking money uh so yeah let's hear what she has to say oh we just had a mutual friend in common a polo player and then we went up and then but then Megan was not as cool oh, it, was, really? it wasn't as naturally warm but maybe well, I don't know. My and then my mum being Australian just asked her all these like slightly rude questions, oh, and I was like, like mom, what? What was like, she asking? Where are your kids? And like, <laughs> things like that. And I'm like, mum, don't ask her that. Well, then maybe that's why she was. Maybe the that's why she was a bit like, who are these <laughs> annoying, <laughs> annoying convicts from Australia? Um, um, but, <laughs> but but Harry was lovely. Yeah, he was actually. Lovely. Oh, we just had a mute. So Rebel Wilson says that um, she met Harry and Meghan, um, I think in Santa Monica, uh, and she met them because they have a mutual polo friend. And she said that on meeting Harry for the first time, he was so lovely. And in meeting Meghan for the first time, she wasn't very warm. Uh, and then she says that she introduced her mother, that her mother made a couple of comments like, where are your kids? And that Meghan was just like really, really uh, not warm. And then Andy Cohen makes the comment, well, maybe she wasn't warm because of what your mum was saying. And then they were having a laugh. Um, so... Rebel Wilson, do you know what? I give her props for speaking out because frankly, you know, she's got a career in Hollywood and a lot of, I don't know, I have this perception, rightly or wrongly, that Meghan and Harry are, you know, they have a lot of power and a lot of influence with certain people, certain powerful people. And they exercise that power to, as it were, cancel people or, or you know, uh, impact people's jobs and livelihoods if they say something and come out and say something that they don't like. And I give two examples. The first is Pierce Morgan and Meghan allegedly calling up the um, director or whoever of uh, the ITV channel, which was the channel... Uh, which hosted his show or the show that he was on and basically said uh, he should apologize and so he was asked to apologize or he would have to leave and he said well I'm leaving and this was after the Oprah interview when he said I didn't believe her so the fact that she sort of called up and to speak to the head of ITV the channel is remarkable and you know she's never spoken out about it so it was sort of it was sort of secretive. And if it wasn't for Pierce Morgan speaking out about it, how would we know about that? Uh, so he obviously lost his job. Um, 
And so, yeah, and then the other example I give is Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson is, you know, a longtime British TV star. And he, it, you may know him from Top Gear. Uh, he also does Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in in England, in, in Britain. Uh, and he has various other shows. And he came out with an article uh, where he was complaining about Megan after the Netflix series. And he basically said that he really dislikes her and referred to, you know, some criminals or whatever, or criminals saying he didn't, he liked her even less. I think the criminal was a murderer or something. And then he uh, referred to the scene of Game of Thrones where uh, it was the shame scene uh, and says basically that he can't wait for the day that Meghan Markle roams through the streets naked with, and people are throwing excrement at her. So he was obviously joking, but there was um, a huge reaction, obviously, to the article. And there was a massive uh, divide between those who thought that, um, you know, he was joking and that there's freedom of speech and he doesn't really mean it. You know, it's satire, it's parody, it's, and why is everyone so offended? And then on the other side, you have people saying, oh, this is, you know, um, inciting crime against women. Uh, in a time where there is so much violence against women, it's dangerous. Uh, there should it should be made a crime to incite violence against women. Uh, and there, then what you saw was uh, there was a slow cancellation of various deals that he had. Like for example, with Amazon, he's got um, a reality TV series about a farm that he has, and apparently it does really well. And it's said that they're not renewing. Um, a contract, I mean, allegedly, and then also allegedly that ITV, um, interestingly, the same channel that Pierce Morgan got sacked from or left, uh, they are not renewing his contract for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and and he did really well on it. And to, um, so anyway, so yes, yeah, so for me, the fact that she is coming out and she's got this career in, in Hollywood and she just casually was like, yeah, this is how I felt. Um, against someone like Meghan Markle, who I would think is quite powerful with certain individuals. I think she was brave and I think good for her because not many people in the sort of acting Hollywood, American elite kind of thing to speak out. So the fact that she has just come out and be like, yeah, I met her and actually she wasn't that nice is is remarkable. And I praise her for that. And good for you, you know, good for you for not just crumbling under the masses and, and following the mass and, you know, jumping on the Harry and Meghan bandwagon so that you can end up going to parties at Oprah's and Ellen DeGeneres and Tyler Perry and, you know, end up in some of their movies and end up in James Corden's TV show and end up in being interviewed by Gail King and, you know, all of these sort of um, friends, you know, they all, they all know each other and they're all friends and then all of a sudden they end up on each other's shows and things so you know what good for you that you were like look up this is my view there you go and um you know it, it felt like she was a bit hesitant to kind of go into it but she did and I think good for you good for you that's your opinion there it is you know and Megan is probably perfectly a nice person and perfectly a nice person to people that she loves and people that are nice to her people that she knows and there we are but my personal view is that Rebel, she wasn't very warm to you and your mum because she don't give a crap. The difference between her and Harry is that Harry was born up in an institution or a family that is all about service and sacrifice and all about the people and all about being friendly and welcoming to the people. And you stand up for hours and you talk to people and it's small talk and you go around in crowds shaking everyone's hands. How are you? You know, how long have you been here? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's all about being good to the people because you are representing a family who represent the country and the Commonwealth. And so you have to be friendly to your subjects. This is, these are your people, right? If the people turn against you, then there's no royal family. So that's the idea is, you know, they're there because of the people. So you have to serve the people that you lead, you know, you, they are public servants. So he's used to that. He's used to just being kind to everyone that he meets. And he's like, hi, 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 how are you? So lovely. He's so used to it. And then obviously he has his mother's, you know, a part of his mother's 
um, empathy and personality. So she was very warm and very loving and would hug people and shake people's hands and would sit and have conversations. You know, I've seen a lot of footage of her and I remember when she was alive and I've seen a lot of footage of her just sitting with people, very ill, sick people in hospitals. And the conversation that she comes out with is remarkable because it's not just small talk. She's really, you know, going in and, and talking to them and really getting to know them and is interested in them. And I couldn't I couldn't do that frankly I mean I I can't I hate small talk let alone genuinely sitting down and talking with someone as though I'm interested so the fact that they do that to tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people a year is amazing so Harry has been born into that and raised in that whereas Megan has not Megan has been you know the normal person with uh, some privilege to make herself famous thinking about a brand thinking about her image and for you and for well, for me personally, the people that she has surrounded herself with are, are twofold. One is yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. You're amazing. You're amazing. Megan, you were, you know, uh, you had this amazing career and she was just about the town and she had everything in front of her before she married Harry. I mean, uh, and then her life just flipped upside down. And it's very, yes, yes, Megan, you're fabulous. You're remarkable. She's a remarkable human being. She's this. She's powerful. Blah, 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 blah. And then, um, you know, they're basically her mouthpieces. So a lot of her friends are her mouthpieces. She doesn't really say much, you know, she doesn't have to say much. It comes through her friends or it comes through her biggest mouthpiece, which is Harry. And so then, then the other reason why I think she has certain people around her is that they benefit her in some way. So either they are powerful, either they are funding something, either they are helping her being connected to someone else, either they are helping her with you know, the come up in life, they are helping her elevate. So she will surround herself with very powerful, very influenced, every very influential and very connected people. And Rebel, I am so sorry, my darling. You are wonderful, beautiful, kind and successful. But unfortunately, I do not think that Megan has any interest in you. And so because you do not serve her purpose and her goal in life, then that's why I think when she met you, she wasn't very friendly. She was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Um, I think if you were an Oprah, a Tyler Perry, an Ellen, an Ellen DeGeneres, if you were an Obama, then she would be like, oh, my God, it's such a pleasure to meet you. You know, like when you saw her with Beyonce, you know, she just she couldn't move. You know, she was smiling, smiling, smiling at Jay-Z, smiling at Beyonce, smiling, smiling, smiling at Beyonce, and then waited for Harry to come over to say hello to Beyonce. Like, she just wouldn't go nowhere. It was just Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. And then, oh, funny that, in her Netflix documentary, I just got a message from from Beyonce. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry, Rebel, but you're just not, unfortunately, beneficial to her. So she doesn't give up monkeys. That's my view, and that's why I think she just wasn't warm to you. But thank you for speaking out, Rebel, because... You know, you're letting people have pieces of information that other people aren't willing to share. And actually, it gives people at least some information where they're able to make their own assumption. And they're not just fed, fed, fed American you know, PR and propaganda. And, you know, they're just not constantly being fed it. They're actually being shown things from other sides and from other people. So, yeah, so people can make up their own minds, you know, and in the same token, I think that if you're someone that Meghan Markle loves and someone that she chooses to have in her circle, I think she's probably such a lovely person to you, you know, and I imagine that all her best friends, her girlfriends and her niece uh, and her mother uh, and Harry, I think she probably shows them quite a lot of love and devotion and affection. Um, I think she's probably very maternal, especially with Harry. So she kind of uh, over loves. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, so thank you, Rebel. So guys, I'm going to wrap that up. Um, I hope that wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that my channel can grow. Please like and comment and press the bell button and blah, 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 so that my channel can, you know, have uh, more traffic and then therefore it will grow. And I will just love you guys forever. Thank you so much. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video. It seems that the comedians from all over the world are coming out to play so thank you guys thank you guys for making us laugh and please carry on making us laugh and harry and megan please take it on the chin it's light-hearted we're enjoying it okay guys take care bye